What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping in. I appreciate it very much. Uh, one of the questions that I get a lot and one of the questions that I've gotten a lot lately, and it's probably due to springtime, so people are picking up project cars, is what should be the first modification that I make to my BMW 335i? It's a great question. It's a little bit tough one to answer, and it's kind of a loaded question, to be quite honest. I'm a big fan of the platform, particularly the N54, because I had a 335i on this channel. And I appreciate you guys' questions because it provides me an opportunity to make relevant content that people actually want to watch. So keep the questions coming in. Uh, so to answer that question, for the 335i, what is the first modification that you should make? Now, I say it's a tough question to answer because there's probably a lot of maintenance items that need to be addressed first. I know all too well, and I know firsthand uh, there's, there's a good chance you're going to be chasing misfires because it just seems to be a never-ending battle with the N54. It could be spark plugs, it could be O2 sensors, it could be coil packs, it could be fuel injectors, it could be a combination of all of them. And you can't just change one and solve the issue. Uh, if you start with the inexpensive thing first and you go coil packs and plugs, you change the spark plugs. But if that wasn't the issue and it was the fuel injectors, now you're going to have to change the spark plugs again because the bad fuel injectors now have either fouled out the spark plugs or they've run lean and they got burnt up or who, who knows. You might have to change your uh, O2 sensors. Again, that can cause issues with the spark plugs. So you're going back and forth replacing things more than once. Very annoying. Chances are you, your oil filter housing gasket is leaking. Chances are your valve cover gaskets are leaking. Chances are your oil pan gasket's leaking. Hopefully, you found a good deal on a car, but you found a good deal on a car that had a lot of these things addressed. None of them are very difficult, and none of them are all too expensive. It's just a hassle to have to go through everything before you start modding the car and having a lot of fun with the dang thing. Of course, you probably have to change your fuel pressure regulator housing. Uh, underneath the back seat because that's probably leaking in your whole garage or car smells like gasoline. Thankfully, I have videos on all of these items and uh, you can check out the channel, uh, probably my BMW 335i playlist and go through all of these maintenance items. I know there's a lot of BMW fanboys out there that are going to say, oh, you just need intakes and a, an exhaust and stage one tune with aggressive pops and bangs. Yeah, okay, sure. That's fun for a second. Don't be one of those guys. It really is a tough, a tough one. Because like I said, those maintenance items are key. But assuming your 335i is healthy, it really doesn't take all that much. The car is very enjoyable to drive. It's one of the best driving cars right out of the box that I've ever had. I love driving the thing. It's a ton of fun. So that's what really makes this kind of tough is that having a car that's so good right off the showroom floor, you know, even 15 years later, uh, it's tough to determine what your first upgrade should be. Uh, because it handles so well, I'm really actually hesitant to say suspension. The 335i handles so good. Uh, it's tight, nimble, uh, very responsive to steering input. It handles the corners really well. It puts power down uh, pretty well. Uh, I'm just hesitant to say suspension. Of course, I, I love going coilovers. I love adjustability, even lowering springs. But in that case, too, BMW has always done a really good job with the stance of their cars. I, I mean, I, I remember the picture that I took of the 335i that I purchased before I purchased it. And I just, I love it. It sort of has a natural rake. Um, it sits really well. The, the tires tuck up into the wheel wells nicely. And BMW has always done that. If you look at some of the, their older vehicles, uh, all the way up in, uh, to, to new vehicles, they just sit really well. And you don't need to really adjust ride height because it's just, it's money. I love a new set of wheels just as much as the next guy does. But that's another thing that BMW has always done really well is designing their factory wheels. Uh, you're hard pressed to find a BMW, a, a factory BMW, through the generations that has an ugly set of wheels they're always really good uh, and it's not i'm not saying that you shouldn't change the wheels and there's not better options for a 335i but uh, i would say if you're looking to start improving how the vehicle handles uh, right out of the gate or you know runs or the power that it makes i wouldn't spend two three thousand dollars on a set of wheels i just wouldn't i think the factory wheels are good enough and it's a nice base um, to start with, and therefore you can put money to better use. 
um, in terms of selecting your very first modification. So you might be thinking, well, if it's not wheels and it's not suspension, what's the first modification? The next reasonable guess or thought would be exhaust. Of course, a lot of people love to change the exhaust. They want to get the car sounding more aggressive and potentially pull a little bit more power out of it. And, you know, I'm one of those people too. For one of the, most often, the very first thing that I do to a vehicle is change the exhaust. With that being said, however, 335i is a little bit different. First of all, factory exhaust note really isn't that bad. Straight six sounds really good. You know, with the factory valves, it opens it up a little bit under acceleration. Um, it's got a nice subtle tone to it with the factory burbles. And the second element to that is so many of the exhaust systems out in the market for the 335i, even the expensive, really reputable ones, don't sound that good in my opinion. So that's one negative thing that I see about that platform is that when you start modifying it and really trying to pull power out of it, you sacrifice exhaust tone. Uh, you, you sacrifice quality exhaust tone, I should say. It starts to sound not that great. So if not wheels, if not suspension, if not exhaust, what then? What's the first modification you should make to your 335i? I'm going to give you two. There's two of them that I think are going to make a big difference, but also be very important. Number one, tires. Uh, in my experience, buying used cars in particular, which obviously at this point you're buying used 335i, people seem to cheap out on tires. Um, especially these, you know, the N54, uh, it's probably been a, a young person in general that you're buying them from. You may be a young person and, and no offense, but uh, just the reality is people generally in my, from what I've seen, they're not putting, you know, 1500 or $2,000 worth of tires on a car that they're trying to sell for like nine or 10 grand. So uh, that's just what I've seen. So. If you're looking to have this car for a long time, or if you're looking to really push the limits of the vehicle, a really good set of tires can completely change how the car feels on the road. It could be quieter, it could be more comfortable, but more importantly, you're gonna put the power down to the ground more effectively. So that's why I say tires, because you don't even need to make a bunch of power. If the car is making 250, 300 horsepower already to the wheels, um, It's gonna feel it's gonna feel so good when you're getting grip. You're gonna be able to take corners hard. You're gonna leave corners hard without worrying about spinning. Uh, you're gonna get off the line and get up to speed quickly. Uh, tires makes a huge difference no matter what car you're driving. The other one I'm gonna to say too, and it's an important one for the 335i, is an oil catch can. There's a ton of blow by on these cars, especially now when you're picking up a used one that's probably been beat on a little bit. Let's be honest and one that has some miles on it, the chances that you're going to experience a little bit of blow-by is pretty high. But blow-by really isn't the issue by itself, right? It's the nature of the fuel injection system, just like any other vehicle that has a similar style of fuel injection system where the valves aren't being washed by the fuel being injected on top of the valves, are being the fuel is being injected directly into the cylinders. Um, so that can cause that gunky, grimy buildup uh, on the valves. So what an oil catch can is going to do is catch that oil that would otherwise be recirculated through the intake system and dumping that carbony, sooty, crappy buildup onto the valves. Um, so you want to catch that. You want to catch that uh, those uh, oil particulates and nasty air that would otherwise make it through and land on the valve. So the catch can is going to make a big difference. Uh, if you combine that with that maintenance step of a walnut blasting or chemical cleaning of the valves, it's going to be a, a good combination of maintenance and then a part to prevent that build up in the future or reduce the uh, the velocity in which that build up uh, occurs so that's my suggestion for first modification or first upgrade to your 335 eyes get a good set of tires on there if it doesn't already and get an oil catch can but truly if i was going to pick up another 335 i those would be the first two things i would do not very glamorous or exciting upgrades or modifications not as uh, exciting as you maybe were anticipating for a first modification, but truly it's going to set the car up for success going forward. It's going to handle better. It's going to feel better on the road and you're going to prevent that gunk build, build up on the valves. Uh, if you combine that again with uh, actually doing a walnut blasting or a chemical cleaning of the valves, it's going to be a, a good combination to, you know, a, a good starting platform to, to build upon. And again, assuming all those maintenance items have already been addressed, you should be 
at a good starting point to start modifying. Uh, after tires and uh, oil catch can, I would say I would probably start thinking about air intake and exhaust. You know, whether you're going catless or uh, high flow cats, uh, getting that air moving through, you know, feeding those turbos. And uh, God, that's another thing. Replacing turbos. <laughs> God, it's such a good platform. It's such a fun car, but it can really be a, a maintenance nightmare. And then I'd start looking at suspension and and uh, sway bars and things like that. I, I'm more of a of a um, you know drive a slow car fast kind of guy. Um, so I don't need a ton of horsepower if the car is planted and nimble and responsive. I really can't ask for that much more. And 335i, you know, especially the coupe, you can make them look so good. So. I'd focus on handling stuff. I'd focus on making sure the car is running right and, um, you know, as healthy as can be, uh, and then work on some aesthetic stuff. And that's basically it. I'm a pretty simple guy. But those are my suggestions. Take them as you will. Let me know in the comments below what you think your first modification or upgrade would be to a 335i or what, what you did to your 335i right off the bat. I'm curious to know. Curious to know where people's heads are at in terms of modifications and what they prioritize. So let me know in the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching this one. More stuff coming for the channel. Hope you follow along. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.